we will uh, take neurofibromatosis and the imaging spectrum in that particular entity. Before we go do that, there is a group called pachomatosis. Pachos means in Greek mole or a freckle. Congenital neuroactive dermal disorders share characteristics of central nervous system and skin tumors. Common are neurofibromatosis, tuberous sclerosis, one hepalendal disease, surge vapor syndrome, whereas less common entities are basal cell nevus syndrome, Osler Weber Randu disease, ataxia, telangiectasia, and then triple Trenoni syndrome. Now, neurofibromatosis is a confusing, controversial, and calidioscopic. These are the terms used to describe neurofibromatosis by various authors in the past. Frederick von Recklinghausen treated Tiresias in 1793 with the first clinical description of fibroma moniscum, named the disease neurofibromatosis. He named the disease, but earlier Tiresias in 1793, he gave the clinical description of fibroma moniscum. And now it is called, of course, 1982 by Van Recklinghausen as neurofibromatosis. This is a congenital hereditary dysplasia involving all three germ layers and involving every organ system of the body. Joseph Merrick, he was called the elephant man who exhibited severe, disfiguring, cutaneous and skeletal manifestations of neurofibromatosis and it was described in 1884. Radiography of his skeleton at London Hospital suggested other osseous dysplasias such as Paget's was included in that, fibrous dysplasia and malaria osteosis also. Neurofibromatosis, at least eight separate forms of neurofibromatosis, NF1 to NF8 have been described, although two types, Van Recklinghausen disease, that is NF1, and neurofibromatosis, the bilateral acoustic schwannomas, that is NF2, are generally agreed upon. These are the agreed terms. The terms central and peripheral neurofibromatosis are inaccurate. Both NF1 as well as NF2 show central nervous system involvement. More than 90% of all neuro NF1 cases are neuro NF1. In other words, we are clear now. Of all these eight groups, NF1 and NF2 are the major categories. The NF1, all whatever we call neurofibromat, you know, and all that 90% of the cases are included in F1. In NF2, there are bilateral acoustic schwannomas. That must, be, that must be a must. These disorders represent dyshistogenesis of neuroectodermal and mesodermal tissue. Autosomal dominant with chromosomal 17 locus for NF1, whereas chromosome 22 for NF2. Let us go to the clinical features of NF1. Family history, 50 to 60 percent of the time. Autosomal dominant with strong penetrance. Incidence is 1 in 3,000 to 4,000. 50 percent of patients show manifestations at birth alone. By age 1, 75 percent. Caffeolous parts occur more than 90 percent. Smooth edges like the coast of California, those are the caffeolous parts because caffeolous parts also can be seen in fibrosis where there is a rough. Six or more of these clinical features, 1.5 centimeters or greater in diameter, neurofibroma. Moluscum fibrosum, soft, sessile or pedunculated, single or multiple lesions. No sex prediction. Continue, neurofibromatosis 1, familial autosomal dominant hematomatous disorder. Diagnostic criteria include more than two of the following. Six or more five millimeters or larger caffeolous spots, either six or more, and each one should be larger than five millimeters. Either one plaque plexiform neurofibroma or two or more neurofibromas of any type. One plexiform neurofibroma, two or more neurofibromas. Two or more pigmented iris hematomas, 
so called wrist nodules, axillary and inguinal freckling, optic nerve glioma, first degree relative with neurofibroma 1, presence of characteristic bone lesion, namely dysplasia of greater wing of sphenoid. So, diagnostic criteria include more than two of these criteria. Clinical pictures, caffeolous parts, you can see smooth, neurofibromata on the face and neck, nodules. Again, another child, baby, and uh, look at the deformity of, the, of her uh, left leg. There is pseudoarthrosis in the left leg due to neurofibromatosis. This is the picture of raised nodules of molluscum fibrosum. Now, multiple cutaneous nodules you can see on the radiograph also. On a PAV of the chest, they may look as lung nodules, but in the lateral or oblique views, you can identify the neurofibromata. Of course, CT also shows on the cutaneous neurofibromata. Neurofibromatous 1, multi-system involvement, brain and spinal cord, skeleton, heart and lungs, mediastinum, genitourinary tract, liver and biliary tract, gastrointestinal tract, retroperitoneum and any of the endocrine glands. Central nervous system manifestations in 15 to 20 percent of patients with an F1. Collisions, macrocrania due to macroencephaly, intracranial calcifications, bilateral somomatous calcifications in the temporal horns, hypoplasia of greater wing of sphenoid with temporal lobe herniation into orbit. That's why clinically they get pulsatile exophthalmos. Calvarian defects, for example, lambdoidal suture, more common, we see radiologically more on the left side. Can you have enlarged internal artery canals? That doesn't mean it belongs to NF2 without facial or acoustic nerve masses due to simply due to dural ectasia. The one on your left is the lateral view of the skull showing a defect in the lambdoid suture. The other one on your right is the same thing defect in the lambdoid suture seen in a PA view of the skull. Again on your left. AP view, absent left greater wing of sphenoid, look into the so called empty orbit and also you see sutural defects. In the one on your right, lateral view, only one sphenoid wing is seen because the other one is absent. Usually you would see double lines. And then CT, absence of right greater wing of sphenoid, you could say, with enlarged middle cranial fossa. And in this Downs projection, you could see internal artery canals, right canal is widened with uh, the arrow show the widened right canal. And CT of the same patient, acoustic neurofibroma, that uh, hyperdense lesion. Internal artery canal enlargement can also occur as we said earlier, the repeat dural ectasia and not necessarily due to tonoma. Comparison between NF1 and NF2, this is important. NF1, von recluin sarsen disease, already defined. And NF2, bilateral acoustic neuromas. NF2, 1 in 4,000, whereas NF, NF2 is 1 in 1,50,000. In NF1, chromosome 17 is already mentioned earlier. NF2, chromosome 22. Prominent skin manifestation in NF1 minimal skin changes in NF2. These are the important differentiating points. To continue further, NF1 associated with tumors of neurons, namely hematomas and astrocytes, gliomas, plexiform neurofibromas, malignant nerve sheath tumors and dural ectasia. Whereas in NF2, these are associated with tumors of meninges, meningiomas and Schwann cells, cranial nerve synomas. In NF1, spinal neurofibromas usually small and single, whereas in NF2, spinal monomas often large, bilateral, multiple levels. In NF1, questionable whether these patients develop any sp spinal gliomas at all, whereas in NF2, spinal ependymomas and astrocytomata, astrocytomas are a prominent feature. Intracranial neurofibromas are rare except in NF1, those are all and in skull films, may show one or both optic canals, 
that are enlarged. CT enlargement of optic nerve sheath complex, MR fissures, lesions are iso or slightly hypo intense on T1 images, mild to strongly hyper intense in T2, often seen on T2 or other high signal areas without mass effect in basal ganglia, internal capsule, pons, cerebral peduncles, cerebellum, etc. These may be slightly hyper intense on T1 images also and probably represent hamartomas. That is the difference between a definite neurofibroma or a hamartoma. Examples, clinical example on the top you see a 12 year old girl, plexiform neurofibroma, the disfiguration of the face and head. Same patient, the views taken in PA and lateral views, overlap of plexiform neurofibroma, that is why you said the dense soft tissue masses. Of course, the multiple lucent defects not only in the uh, lambda suture, but in the coronal suture also. Again, continue plexiform neurofibroma is also diffuse neoplastic involvement, benign neoplastic involvement of a nerve and its branches. It is of exocranial origin, but often extend intracranially also along natural foramina, fissures, for example, from orbit, pergopalatin fossa into cavernous may extend into the cavernous sinus. Same patient which we have seen clinically, CT, note the extension into the orbit and intracranial extension. And MRI, similar findings are noted, extension of the orbit and into the intracranial fossa. This is a 27 year old man with NF1, contrast enhanced CT scan, hypoplasia of the right greater wing of the sphenoid, you can see. Intensive cutaneous plexiform neurofibroma is also present which involves the orbit and also extends into cavernous sinus, the arrows go beautifully. Now we come to optic nerve glioma, most common sinus tumor in NF1, lesions can involve one or both optic nerves, chiasm, tracts, lateral, geniculate body and optic radiation. Look at the CT, NF1 bilateral optic nerve glioma, the arrows point to. Mean age of NF1 patients is 5 years with optic nerve gliomas. Optic nerve, nerve gliomas without NF, a 12 years average age. Benign histologically low grade astrocytomas, these are low grade astrocytomas. And CT, neurofibroma right optic nerve, look at the cylindrical enlargement. Now, intracranial lesions, what are they? Optic uh, orbital lesions we have seen. Astrocytoma, glioblastoma, stenosis of active duct due to circumferential involvement by gliosis or glioma. Non optic gliomas, gliomas most commonly, these are all called low grade astrocytomas, occur with increased frequency in NF1. Common locations are the tectal and periacrodictal regions, brainstem, etc. Occasionally, anaplastic astrocytoma or glioblastoma multiform may develop. Non glial neoplasms, not a feature of NF1. Vascular abnormalities, dysplastic stenosis of vessels, net or near circle of villus, intra or extracranial aneurysms also can be seen. Cranial nerve tumors, schwannomas of cranial nerves, third to eighth, are a feature of NF2 not NF1, please remember, optic nerve, namely CN2, cranial nerve 2 neoplasms are histologically brain neoplasm and cranial nerve 1, namely the olfactory is also anatomically a brain tract, not a nerve and does not give rise to schwannomas. It is a 5 year old girl with NF1 MRI, NF1 axial on your left side is and on your right side, sagittal planes, post contrast T1 weighted scans with an extensive plexiform neurofibroma that involves the lid and orbit and extends posteriorly through an enlarged orbital fissure into the cavernous sinus. Another 5 year old child is an F1 MR scanning, glioma of the optic nerve and chiasm, large RFs so in the sagittal T1 and axial T2 weighted weighted images. Multiple foci of increased signals on T2 weighted images, BC, 
all arrows b and c are often seen in f and f1 most of these are benign and to tend to diminish in size as the patient ad, age advances in what are the manifestations in axial skeleton a4 scoliosis in one third to half of patients this is in significant radiological finding probably it reflects primary mesoderma dysplasia not necessarily due to neurofibromatoid p3 to t7 most common short segment angular deformities usually mild but occasionally can be rapidly progressive resulting in compression of the spinal cord and paraplegia and again continue to radiological manifestations in neurofibromatosis spine kyphoscoliosis vertebral spal c the lateral cervical spine vertebral scalloping it may be posterior anterior or in lateral due to lateral meningoceles or just due to dysplasia meningoceles agenesis or hypoplastic vertebrae radicals and dysplastic vertebrae again a 15 year old girl presented with dys dysphagia that is the main symptom due to plexiform neurofibromatosis extending from the neck to the thorax into the posterior mediastinum pressing upon the esophagus look at the pictures lateral view of the cervical spine uh, the trachea is pushed anteriorly by the plexiform neurofibrom and ap view the shows the extension to the mediastinum and in the lateral view this extension is the posterior mediastinum classical of neurogenic masses and then two different cases one on your left again shows the mass displacing the larynx and trachea and also shows the vertib anterior vertebral scalloping due to plexiform neurofibromatosis one on your right side shows the uh, in the occiput soft tissue swelling with erosion of the occipital bone due to plexiform neurofibromatosis this is another 12 year old boy with increasing kyphotic deformity this is all is a clinical symptom of the neck not the pre cervical mass and erosion of the vertebral body with acute kyphosis same patient thinning of the left clavicle associated features and hypoplasia of the left upper limb look at the left humerus thin and hypoplastic same patient mri look at the cervical spine cross sectional view of mri the arrow show the plexiform neurofibroma another case dumbbell neurofibroma with erosion of lamina c2 lamina lateral cervical spine beautifully shows the erosion and widening of the space between c1 and c2 lamina same patient with ct with contrast shows again a dumbbell type of neurofibroma another patient dumbbell type of neurofibroma with widening of intervertebral canal erosion of adjacent spine and bones and the another old case no when myelogram was popular in 60s and conventional myelogram multiple filling defects due to neurofibromatosis multiple at the scalloping of the column and then neurofibromatosis is both cutaneous as well as intraspinal again shows the vertebral posterior vertebral scalloping scoliosis different types scoliosis with thin ribbon ribs twisted ribs we call it from mild it may vary from mild scoliosis to severe scoliosis another example surgical correction of scoliosis one in the on your left side scoliosis and one on your right side surgical correction of scoliosis to prevent paraplegia due to compression of the spinal cord and the various degrees of scoliosis i told you this is the demonstration of the various degrees mild to severe posterior vertebral body scalloping and pedicle erosion look at in the ap view the right pedicle is thin and eroded with a widened interpedicular space usually multi level most often due to dural ectasia dumbbell spinal neurofibromas in only in 13 to 20% of the cases 3% have plexiform neurofibroma causing enlargement again so a spectrum nf1 with acute kyphoscoliosis 
and in the middle picture you see the posterior vertebral scalloping and in myelogram you see the dural ectasia, in pedicles, widened canal and the other neurofibromata, purely dural ectasia. MRI, dural ectasia in neurofibromata is posterior scalloping of vertebrae, nothing with dural ectasia. Again, spectrum of bony abnormalities in different patients, 1, 2, 3, 4. In, the, in fact, you can see the dislocation of the hip on your bottom on the right side. Pinned out obturator foramen, widened obturator canal, streaky appearance in the femoral head, sacral dysplasia, and an AP view of the abdomen or spine. You can see multiple genius neurofibromata superimposed over spine as soft tissue masses. Look at the dysplasia and deformity of the sacrum. Again, dysplastic sacrum with interosseous meningocele producing the defect as the arrow points out on the right side of the lateral view of the sacral spine. Meningocele scalloping that you see in, in conventional AP view of the pelvis and on uh, myelogram you see the dural sacs filled with contrast material. And CT, most of you know the, how we calculate the tissue densities by the Hounsfield units. Uh, fat minus gas minus water zero and soft tissues, bones maximum. Like that you can from the measuring the densities, call it Hounsfield units. From that we can easily judge, of course, by visualization, normal eyeball. Also you can mention, but uh, scientifically for evidence, to always measure the densities in the Hounsfield units. Neurofibromatosis, various uh, films showing the scalloping of the sacral canal. Another sacral meningocele, CT. You know, this is a primitive uh, type of CT taken in 1974. That's why the resolution is not that good. Again, CT of the pelvis. And F1 with neurofibroma and meningocele. Look at the dumbbell.